Introducing Swim Ontario's Olympians from this year's Olympic Games. Javi, from the youngest male member on the team in 2016, now makes his second Olympic Games. Bailey, her first Olympic Games, but it's been a great springboard to success in the ISL later this season. Katrina, 15 years old, made the 1500 her first Olympics. Tess, her first Olympic Games, qualifying in the 400 IM. Ruslan the man, also his first Olympics, a valuable member of our men's relay teams. Second Olympic Games for Yuri, qualifying in the 100 free and multiple men's relays. Finley's first Olympics, qualifying in the 200 IM, and just like Bailey now, multiple great swims at the ISL since. 18 years old, Josh Liendo, youngest male on the team. Murray Drudge would be very proud. Maggie McNeil, first Olympic Games, second Olympic champion in successive Olympic Games for Ontario. Kylie Maas, her second Olympics, improving on her amazing first Olympic Games, comes home with three medals. Gabe, best hair on the team, a young man with a bright future for sure. 14 years old, Summer McIntosh, Coach Kevin Thorburn would be smiling for sure. Penny Alexiak, three more medals, now Canada's most successful Olympian and still more to come. Sydney Pickram, her second Olympics, her first Olympic final, her first Olympic medal, did her job for the team. Taylor Rook wins her third and fourth Olympic medals at her second Olympic Games and her first individual final. Kyla Sanchez comes home with two medals, best times all the way throughout and with a smile on her face. And Rebecca Smith, first Olympic Games, comes home with a silver medal, couldn't happen to a nicer kid. Wow, 17. 17 athletes I've just had to introduce, all with strong Ontario links. I don't think we've seen anything like that, certainly for a long time, and maybe we never will again. Something we should all be very, very proud of. In 2012, when I arrived, Swim Ontario's mission statement was for having an Ontario trained athlete win a medal at the World or the Olympic Games. Well, that box was ticked way back in 2015 and we haven't stopped moving forward since. Seven Olympic medals in 2016, 15 Olympic medals in 2021. That's what athletes with Ontario links in the swimming community brought back for us all to enjoy, for us all to be part of. It takes all of us with a strong team mentality, with a goal, focus, and doing it with smiles on our faces. And we should be as, as proud now of our athletes and our efforts as we've ever been. It's a tough year. High performance was out of the water for four months. The majority of us, even longer. Some kids only just getting back in to swim now. Little or no racing opportunities to improve, to see where we're at. No camps or travel to hone our skills and our mental fortitude. We just had to do what we could every day to try to get better. The same black line for 14 months straight, if we were lucky enough to be in the water. And those 14 months give us back 15 medals. Again, wow. Our trials continually moved. The goalposts always being pushed back. We all had to replan. We had to refocus. We had to re-prepare. Exhausting for all concerned, from Swim Ontario staff and meet management down to the athletes and coaches. Everybody had to adjust. Everybody had to keep moving forward. But finally, a team was picked. And off we went to Tokyo. Some of us never thought we would get that far. We staged in Vancouver. Great camp, great city. 
but we were there because our camp in Japan had to be cancelled, meaning we were flying in late to Tokyo. Probably one of the most hard done by countries in terms of travel to the Olympic Games that there was. When we arrived, eight hours, eight hours we waited at the airport, no transport, no buses. When we get to the athlete village, we couldn't swim for the first two days. Athletes had to make do with doing something different. What are you going to do? You're going to cry about it or you're going to push on? We pushed on. Athletes went in the weight room. They activated the muscles. They got focused on their job. No matter what the circumstance, we moved forward, just like we'd done all year. But it's never smooth. Day one, buses to the pool didn't turn up. Athletes and staff waiting, 40 degree temperature, 95% humidity. A challenge, a real challenge. For me personally, and, and I feel confident in admitting this, the first training session at the Olympic pool, I struggled. I struggled being around more people. I struggled with there being noise. I struggled with just that environment, an environment where usually I feel I'm comfortable, where I thrive. That first session, having not been around people and lots of athletes and noise for a year and a half, I was uncomfortable. I had to adjust, but adjust we did. The first final session, we beat America for the first time in the women's 4x100 freestyle relay, winning the silver medal. Second final session, Maggie McNeil, gold medal. It had been about the same time in the heats and the semifinals and dropped down around almost a second, just missing the world record, breaking the national record. Gold medal again for Canada second successive Olympic Games where Ontario produces an Olympic champion. The third final session, Kylie Maas once again leading through 85 meters of the race, wins a silver in the 100 backstroke against a world-class field. If she'd stayed where she was performance-wise from her previous years, she would have finished outside the medals but she moved forward. She made the difference when it counted and won her third Olympic medal in that third final session. In the fourth final session, Penny Alexiak, bronze in the 200 freestyle, in her best time. That's a young lady who has done her best time in every single competition or every single race that's an Olympic final. She's now won medals in the 100 free, the 200 free, and the 100 fly at the Olympic Games. Awesome stuff. The fifth final session, fourth. Tough place to finish at any competition, let alone the Olympics. But we broke the national record. Three teams broke the world record. You can only control what you can control. A great performance can still mean a terrible result. That's life. Same thing happened on the sixth final session. Penny Alexiak, another national record, fourth place, misses a medal by 0.0 of a, uh, seven of a second. Seventh final session, we turned it back around. Kylie, silver medal, national record, 200 backstroke. And the last day, women's four by one medley relay. Middle lane, under pressure, national record. Improving on us, missing the podium from 2016. Awesome results. Our results again, led a lot through relays. It takes more than the four people in the final to get an Olympic or World Championship relay result. It could be five, it could be six. Heck, we even went with seven in one of our relays. But that's what you need to do at the Olympic Games. It's hard. It's a war of attrition. By the time you're getting to the medley relay on the ninth or 10th day of competition, who's the freshest? Who can step up? Who can get the job done? Different strategies for different relays. Taylor Rook swam the heats of the 4x1 freestyle relay, setting the girls up to be in the final, allowing Maggie to have a rest. 
allowing Maggie to have that bit of extra energy to win that gold medal later on in the meet. Girls come second. The four by two. Tough race, coming fourth. But all we could do was our best, and we did that. 155 splits leading off from young Summer McIntosh. 155 splits from Kyla Sanchez and Penny Alexiak. National record, three other teams break the world record. What more can you do? And on that last day, this women's medley relay, different athletes swam different parts. Taylor Rook swam the heats the day before. Kyla Sanchez swam the heats the day before giving our team the best chance of success in that final and righting the wrong from 2016 where we just missed the podium. But it takes a team. It takes all of us. What's our core business? Getting the best result we can. The men's relays. A month before the Olympics, we weren't even in the men's 4x100 freestyle relay. With 25 meters to go, we were in third place. What a tremendous job by the gentlemen. The team included a 37-year-old and an 18-year-old. Yuri Kissel split 47-1, one of the fastest splits of the entire field. And our 4x100 medley relay, very young team. With Gabe, Josh, Cole, the future's bright for these boys. Athletes like Javi, doing their job for the team in the mixed relays, getting the experience. Big, big results and the men's team is ready to go come three years time. Overall, team comes back with 15 medals. Five of those athletes came back with two or more medals. Taylor, two. Kyla, two. Kylie three, Maggie three, Penny three. And the average age of those young women is between 20 and 21 years old. We should be very proud of what the athletes and staff and Sumonterio staff achieved this year in very difficult circumstances. Being able to get meets or trials or time trials off the ground to give these young men and these young women the best chance of success, to be able to put medals around each other's neck. The end result is the medals you see before you. Young people achieving success with smiles on their face. Even good looking coaches can sometimes do something right. Be proud of what we've done Always want more and keep pushing the boundaries for Swim Ontario.